Yeah, don't worry, we're good. Okay, welcome back. How are we getting on? Hello, dudes. Hello. Today, we're joined with the very talented Jeremiah, is it Boots, Bootsai, or how do you pronounce it? Sorry, Bitsui. Bitsui. No, no problem. Lovely. My apologies. Yeah. That's cool. Who uh, is known for playing Victor on Breaking Bad. How are you doing, Jeremiah? Oh, I'm doing fine. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's, it's funny because... Uh, um, you know, as an actor, you're always known as like the last thing that, um, that you're known for, which I think for some actors, they have a problem with it. But um, I, at a young age, I was on a, a movie called Natural Born Killers when I was really young. And so for if the you longest didn't hear about time, it, it was a big movie. Yeah. Yeah. And for the longest time, I was known, even when I was like a grown man, I was like known as, oh, you know, like we'd go, we'd go out or something and be at the bars and the f friends would be like, this is that little Indian boy from Natural Born Killers. So, you know, thank God for uh, Breaking Bad because I'm no longer known as, as the little Indian boy from uh, Natural Born Killers. That's the thing with like child actors though. It's like if you take, for example, like Macaulay Culkin, you're yeah, always going to know him as Kevin McAllister, you know? Or, or the guy we had yeah. on, Zach Mabry. We mm, got him like, on because he was a child actor. In like Little Rascals. Uh, McAllister, is that, that's Irish, right? I think, I think, yeah, I think his dad was Irish in the, in the movie anyway. Probably. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so I guess we'll start from the beginning. Uh, obviously, okay. you're an actor. But yep. it's all started back a long, long time ago in 1994 uh, when you were in Natural Bone Killers. So how did you get into that? Or was that your first role? Uh, yeah, actually, I am. Um, so the long story short is... Um, I came from a rodeo family, like my parents were um, in a rodeo, like so bareback riding where you see guys riding the wild horses and um, barrel racing, which not a lot of people know about, but it's riding around three barrels and a clover leaf, um, which you guys, you guys probably know about the, the clover leaf. Um, <laughs> so the clover bit. leaf pattern and, you know, it's about as however fast you can get around it. Um, so nonetheless, I, I had allergies and was, um, oh. like a bubble boy. So the, the thing that I could do is stay in and watch TV and, in and, and film. And, and so it was a little bit different than other kids who were like, you know, Hey, go play outside. It was like, I was always being encouraged to stay inside. So the long story short part is, um, when I was five, they came, the, this Japanese film crew was filming a, a movie and they decided they were going to come to my town and they needed horses. And so they came to my parents and I came up dressed up like a ninja to their first meeting and they were really <laughs> embarrassed. And, uh, you know, much later they, they realized they're like, Oh, this kid's kind of, you know, he's, uh, he's not afraid of the camera. So, um, yeah, I got, I booked, that was my first like official role. It was a kid's film in, in Japan. And, and so I was always very interested and that was kind of my way of relating to the world. You know, I'd, I'd see, uh, I watched a ton of movies, pretty much every movie in my rental rental store. And, um, and you know, would do skits, Saturday Night Live stuff. And so that's kind of, that experience allowed me to be social and bring other kids into my world where I could actually play. So that's kind of, that's how I got my start. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I was cool. disconnected for a second, but... Uh... You, you were saying some pretty cool stuff. I didn't know about Saturday, Saturday Night Live. Oh yeah, no, I wasn't in Saturday Night Live, but I would, uh, I, I would pretend like I was in Saturday Night Live, and we would, uh, you know, we do skits and and things, and yeah. whatever we'd see, like our favorite shows, where we would, um, we would try to pull it off. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'll be honest, that yeah. sounds a little bit cute. <laughs> You're gonna yeah. doing that. That's yeah. Cute stuff. So That's awesome. what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then you weren't in anything for ten years later. Yeah. So I stopped. So, I, I quit acting um, when I was about fourteen. I, I technically, not technically, but um, I was. I auditioned for a big film. Uh, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but it's probably it probably doesn't matter. Um, a movie called Sun Chaser with, uh, again, with Woody Harrelson, again, with Regency Films. And, uh, you know, of course, Woody Harrelson gave me a good, um, 
uh, gave me a good reference and the director, Michael Camino, thought I was good for the part. Um, and I was excited. He told me unofficially that I got the role and weeks went by, nothing happened, nothing happened. Long story short, I got my heart broken and that was my first like heartbreak um, in the industry and I didn't want to touch it again. And mm -hmm. so I quit acting for about uh, 10 years right. and uh, kind of fell back in my lap. Yeah. Well, you obviously went back into it eventually because obviously here we are. So yeah. what made you yeah, want to get back later, into it? Um, I was actually trying to get into directing and writing and I was in a, a fellows program in, in LA um, going to school, going through the, this, uh, this, this program through a program called the IFP um, Project Involved was the name of the program. And uh, so a lot of like, they try to get us to get out of our shell as like writers and storytellers. And, and so they had us do skits and, you know, it was still pretty natural to me even though it's been about 10 years. And um, a few of the fellows were like, hey, could you, you know, are you up for doing this? Are you up for doing that? And I was like, yeah, not really. I'm, you know, I want to stay on this track and I want to become a director. And um, again, long story short, uh, I got, I got, a, I, I, I tried to get into UCLA uh, the day that I went to go for my tour at UCLA film school. Um, I got a, a, a notice in the mail and it's one of those things like you've probably seen this in TV and film a lot. Um, my roommate called me and she's like, hey, guess what? Uh, you got a letter from UCLA. And I said, OK, great. Uh, I said, open it, please. And so she's like, I open it up. She's like, oh, man, I'm sorry you didn't get in. And so here I am touring UCLA. Um, oh. And it turned out there was a screening for Christopher Nolan's uh, one of his films, I, f I forget which film he was screening back then, but um, he was going to be doing a screening and a Q&A. And I was like, well, <laughs> since this is like, you know, that that was my whole purpose and drive at that point in life. And um, and so I thought, well, you know what, I may as well just watch a movie here at UCLA and and get some advice from who is, I think, one of the greatest filmmakers at that time. I was a big fan of Memento. And um, this this was actually Insomnia with uh, Al Pacino. Oh yeah. So by the end, he, he's he, well. The way, actually, the way he introduced the film, and I'll just leave it here, is that he said, um, "I uh, I never for all the few people that made it to UCLA to the film department, congratulations." You know, he, he said all this stuff that kind of rubbed it in, and then at the end of it, he's like, "For all of you that didn't get in." don't worry because I actually never went to film school and the path isn't always uh, a direct path to become a director. Sometimes it's jagged. Sometimes it's up, it's down. So long story short, I, I started my first business um, and that's what, uh, when I was 19 and that's what supported me to live in LA. When that went belly up, um, I spent a summer with my grandparents and got a call over the summer and they were just like, Hey, uh, can you come back to LA? one of the fellows and they were like, we're doing a movie called Dogtown and I think you'd be great for the role. And basically I, I just sat on it for dinner and thought, Hey, I need to pay some bills and um, ended up flying back to LA, did that, thought it was a fluke. Two weeks later, I'm, I'm back on another set. So it just kind of, it kept snowballing. And then, um, you know, uh, did some crazy stuff uh, just, films projects things kind of landed in my lap and then uh and then breaking bad which i never even expected to to kind of reach this uh i don't think anyone expected it to kind of you know um launch into the the atmosphere that it is which is kind of in its own universe you know yeah we've had other actors on from breaking bad and uh, yeah we love them. No, no we haven't had anyone from better call so no i haven't We've had uh, so. Charles, who plays Skinny Pete, and yeah. then we had Rodney, who plays Pombo. They were awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very awesome. Nice guys. Great. Yeah, those are um, good guys. But, yeah, like, they knew from the beginning it was going to be good. Read the scripts, and they seen, like, the first episode, they're like, we got something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and but, uh, for, for me, I had, I had no idea, like, 
I, even that first season, even though it was out, I, I, I was just busy and hadn't got around to watching it. And, um, you know, auditioned, barely made my audition. There was a crazy story behind that. And then um, landed on, si on set with Giancarlo, and who I thought even back then, I was like, this guy's a legend because I've been yeah. watching him since Do the Right Thing and, and uh, Trading Places. Uh, so I, I just knew, I was like, this is, this is the guy, you know, this is, uh, this is, this is great. And I thought that was it, you know, um, uh, I had a scene with Brian Cranston, to be honest, I didn't really, I, I wasn't aware of how strong his work was just yet. And, um, and then the last 10 years have just been like a, a filmmaking, uh, acting intensive, like just learning from the very best in the business, which I, who I consider, you know, um, and just lucky to, to be a part of the show. And so yeah. it's been, it's been amazing. Mm. I, know, I know a lot of people who've gone for a show, not knowing what it was, or even movies, not knowing what, the, what it was. And afterwards, it turns out to be something incredible. Yeah. So that happens pretty often. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, you never know. Interesting experience, definitely. That's a cool thing for the CV. Oh, yeah, I was in Breaking Bad. Um, yeah. So obviously, you're in Better Call Saul now. Uh, how did you, yes, you go from Breaking Bad to Better Call Saul? Like, were you in contact with the same people, or was it a different group, or did you audition again? Oh, oh no. So it was pretty, it was pretty awesome. So yeah. So like how I got onto Breaking Bad, you know, it was just kind of a, I was actually auditioning for the role of Cynthia, the Los Poyos Hermanos manager. Uh -huh. And, um, and so when I went in like the director and I can, I can break his balls a little bit, but um, um, the director, Adam Bernstein, you know, he was like looking at his, page or whatever I, maybe the new iphone just came out i think that year so it was like here he is like immersed in whatever he was doing um and i didn't he didn't it didn't feel like he listened to he watched my audition at all and um and so i you know i didn't take it personal because i'd been through that before and i was just kind of like oh well you know maybe i'm too fat or too skinny or too ugly or too good looking you know sometimes <laughs> it could be all those all those things in the same day you know you get feedback and it's like oh you're not good look, good looking enough for this one or the next one it's like uh you're um too good looking and it's like wow that's weird um you know or too fat too skinny um so i guess i just wasn't they had cynthia in mind and um i, I additionally i i left the audition and i was just like wow well that was a whirlwind just even getting in there and as i was uh, about to leave the casting director sherry rhodes um, at the studio came and stopped me like in the parking lot and just said, Hey, you got to come back in. And I was like, you know, naturally, like I kind of grew up and, um, uh, had, had some wayward years. And so I always think I'm in trouble, you know? So I thought like, Oh shoot, like what, what did I do? You know, did I take <laughs> the pen from the casting office or something? Or am I like, uh, did something get stolen? So I'm going in there and she's like, she's like, can't trying to catch her breath, walking me back in. And, I see this whole, I didn't even recognize this, the room and it was filled with all these like big burly dudes and tough looking guys. And I was like, oh, okay. And she's like, we're casting another role and we'd love for you to take a shot at it. You know, Adam, Adam thinks this would be a, a good fit. And I was just kind of like, oh, okay. Well, and I went in and, and had five minutes to kind of get it cold read, so to speak, like, you know, what you call it and actors shrugging. And got in and I just, uh, I just, I thought, you know what, I don't have a lot of time to really develop a character. I'm just going to read this like one of the guys that I grew up with. And I grew up with a lot of like Victor types. And, um, and Adam was like, totally in. He was just like, well, do that again, do that again. And so I did it again. He's like, okay. He's like, don't blink. And so I was just like, okay. You know, did the whole thing monotone, not blinking. And then he was just like, he's like, yeah, that's it that's it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I thought like, okay, that's like, you go from one end of the spectrum, completely cold to completely hot. You just kind of learn to never get too like excited, you know, cause it could, it, it, it feels good to be like, you know, you go in there to give a performance and it feels good when an audience, even if it's two people feel something that you, you took 
well, I guess it took five minutes to prepare. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that, that carried me all the way through. And then season four or three, uh, three, they brought me back in and it was actually, I didn't really know what the deal was. And I was wrapped up in NDAs and all of this. And, and then when I got to set, Aaron Paul just told me, he's like, Hey, congratulations. You're regular on the show. And, uh, you know, at, welcome to, welcome to, welcome to Breaking Bad. So, you know, that just kind of lingered on and then, uh, you know, played through season four, of course, that, you know, no spoilers for how that goes. But, um, <laughs> and then, so when Better Call Saul was starting up, you know, I, I knew Giancarlo was coming back on board season two, three, and, and I, you know, kind of had a feeling, but I didn't want to get my hopes up. And uh, sure enough, I got a call. And so we've been in it now for, uh, I've been back on for three seasons and, um, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll uh, knock it out of the park. Uh, and hopefully I'm, I'm still involved in this sixth season. Hopefully I didn't figure a way to, um, oh, not. Victor had to go to Mexico or, hey, Victor got, <laughs> uh, you know, he's paralyzed. He's in a coma or something, you know, uh -huh. temporarily. That'd be so bad. So, uh, that's the yeah. worst way to get fired. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, your, exactly. your character's in a coma. Just fuck off. Yeah, yeah, we had to, had to move on. I'm looking forward yeah. to season six. I love, I love Better Call Saul. It's great. Do you think, uh, do you find like it's a bit different than Breaking Bad kind of being on the set? Or how would you find, would you say the experience is pretty much the same? Uh, set wise, yeah, it's, it's a bit different. Um, but, you know, for Breaking Bad, it was just so brand new. And everyone was kind of like, wow, we're doing this, you know? And then season four, it was just like this feeling like, wow, we're really doing something kind of different. And then, um, yeah. And, and then the season four uh, premiere, it was just like, l l I don't know. Well, I wanted to ask you about that because I heard like a story about Brian Cranston's daughter. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah about the blood about my scene yeah <laughs> yeah with box cutter um no spoilers <laughs> close your ears and turn this off if you uh if you're listening you haven't seen season four um episode one box cutter but uh yeah that it was so much blood um that actually they re-edited the film or the that episode but yeah um uh brian's daughter had actually had a uh had a um uh ended up having a I guess passing out and um and we all felt bad and it it just kind of left a really like serious tone to it you know mm -hmm. um but we kind of I think everyone kind of knew we were hitting on like something very real you know and and something like we were we were really driving into the core of the audience and people were you know people were locked in and then season five I watched it I remember I, I watched every episode in a different season and I would try to watch it, go to like a fan gathering because they were having those back then. So, so yeah, it's nuts. And so now to answer your question, I think with, with Better Call Saul, it's a lot more uh, contemplative. Like it's very, it's a very heady show, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're able to kind of uh, take a slow pace and develop um, moments and characters and, you know, Vince and, and, uh, and Peter, like they have, they, they're very detail oriented. So they have yes. all these little uh, Easter eggs in there for you. So um, yeah. And then, and then, you know, we're all 10 years older, so we're just a lot more mature than we were 10 <laughs> years ago. Which so I always that. think is hilarious yeah. that you always have to try to look younger in America. So it's, it's, oh, it's man. funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're getting older. Yeah. <laughs> No, oh, yeah, they're great shows. Um, I think there's definitely the thing like everybody who watches, uh, who watched Breaking Bad and is watching Better Call Saul, like they know he has to end up somewhere, and like this yeah. this season six now is just kind of like the journey from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. Unless I don't know if there's going to be any more seasons, like any more seasons after that, I'm not sure. But uh, you know, we cut we kind of know where it's going to end, which is kind of like the fun part about it because it gives. I guess it gives Vince a lot more freedom of what he wants to do before, you know, he gets to that point, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, Peter, from what I, at least what I see, I mean, the cool thing is, and you know, kind of when I was just talking, you know, outside of uh, film and television, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur and, 
you know, been an entrepreneur now for 20 years, which sounds like it makes me feel very old. But, um, you know, it, I think when someone's really, really good at what they do, they have the ability to um, just allow people to create and they create the universe, they create, you know, the stars, the planet, everything. And they just kind of say, okay, you know, here's your character, your thing, go ahead and create. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think, you know, uh, at least from what I see, Peter's taken like a very active role in, in crafting it into this, into this, you know, what it, what it is now, which is beautiful. And, and I, you know, to be considered like, um, to getting the acclaim we are currently is, is pretty amazing. Um, but I, I see that it's going to intersect in a great way. Cause I, I kind of see Vince coming back in this last season, hopefully. And, and, you know, everyone, you know, just kind of bringing everyone back together for one, one last, uh, one last run, you know? Yeah. No. Um, I take it that you've seen like, uh, the two shows, I would kind of presume that you've seen, um, do you have a, do you prefer one to another or do you, <laughs> would you say you prefer one to another or how do you see it? That's a tough question. Uh, I, I prefer uh, Better Call Saul because we're still filming it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I know I'm not going to die. Um, no, I guess as a fan, uh, you know, I, I, um, they're different shows for me. You know, um, to be honest, I, I remember season two, three I think two two or three I think I started kind of getting a little bit antsy and feeling like it in Better Call Saul and, and feeling like I wanted them to just propel the storyline like you sometimes see in, in Breaking Bad yeah but it's really this last season that I've I got the build up you know and I was like oh okay this is and I think that's that was the only thing I think sometimes for Better Call Saul fans you can kind of spoil yourself. And, and in some ways I'd, I'd almost have liked to have, uh, of course it's impossible, you know, for me, but um, as a fan to be able to experience, just to think there's fans that are going to experience better call Saul first and then move into breaking bad. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a cool, that's kind of a cool thing, you know, cause uh, you go from very contemplative and, and uh, a slower pace and then you get into Breaking Bad and then, you know, yeah. like season five is just crazy, you know? Yeah, no, Breaking Bad, it's it's always an 100% tension. Like, that you, you always feel like, fuck, like, oh shit, what's he going to do now? Or just like, it's such a good show, Jesus. I remember I watched it around four or five years ago, or I don't know when I watched it. It was about four or five years ago for the first time. I'm just after yeah. watching it there and like forgot a lot of stuff like I did. But hey, yeah, I love it. It was it was really cool. And then your your scene, like you when I say your scene, you know what, like your scene. It uh, yeah it gets my last it, scene. <laughs> it gets it gets you, you know, like Yeah. Which I wanted to ask, um, you work a lot with um Giancarlo Esposito yeah. and uh Jonathan. So what's your relationship like with them? Uh it I don't mean for it to feel mentory, like kind of like a I don't know. I'm very respectful, like naturally just for um, people that have more experience. Maybe that's a bad thing. Maybe I should be more like uh, hold my own and, you know, kind of, uh, but, but I just I have respect for both of their bodies of work. So, I mean, I, I, I'm not shy to just ask um, questions offset or just to kind of, you know, things that I'm curious about. And, and, and I feel like that's, um, that's a testament to them being open and just kind of really uh, relatable in a sense that they can, you, you feel like, I feel like I could go up to them and just be like, you know, Hey, when, when you did X, Y, and Z scene, how did you, you know, how, how did that, how did you process that? Or even something very superficial, like with Brian, I remember when he just won an Emmy the night before and, I, I was just like, wow, that's, I, I just told him, I was like, it has to be really surreal, you know? And I, I said, isn't that weird? Like I said, I've, I've never really actually thought about winning an award. Um, for me, it feels like we're like, this is what we do. And, 
in some ways it feels like, you know, if, if you work at a grocery store and you're cashier to be given like an award and be like, Hey, you know, great job. You know, it, it, it feels like it's, I don't know. I mean, of course the work should be awarded, but it just, I don't know if I could get it in the right context that I did that day, but he was just, he's like, yeah, no, I get what you're saying. He's like, yeah, it, it, it does feel odd. And, you know, to be in front of all these people and, in, and to be awarded, you know, um, and I guess he was saying that it's, you know, it, it's never been about the awards for him too. Like it, he said that he started and it was always about providing for his family. So his motivation wasn't anything superficial. It was, hey, I, I got a family now and I got to support my family. So I, I thought, wow, that's, a, sounds, that's like a, isn't that amazing? Like it sounds parallel? super like a show I've watched, but God yeah. needs to provide to his family. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, exactly. You ever see that thing of like, if he lived in Europe, the entire thing wouldn't have happened? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Because like uh, yeah. healthcare is pretty cheap over here. Like if he yeah. lived over here, yeah. he just wouldn't have needed to sell meth. <laughs> yeah, I've I've seen there was a meme on that, um, but yeah, you know, and, and so I, to speak to it, I think that that's exactly how th there are guys that you feel like I told I actually was texting uh, Giancarlo the other day, and I was like, hey, you know, I know this seems weird, I said, but who knows when we'll see each other again after this next season? I said, do you mind if I just take you for a slice of pizza? Um, uh, because I said, do the right thing was one of my favorite films. in uh, in when I was growing up and he was like, yeah, for sure. He's like, let's go, we'll go for a slice of pizza, you know? And, and so I know how much people like honor him as an actor and these, so it's like a huge blessing. It's amazing to, to, to be able to, to have access and, and to truly learn and, and be able to, to interact with these guys. Mm. You know? So I feel like, That's how I feel. even though that like, Giancarlo he's an extremely serious person in the show and like you know barely cracks a smile I feel like he would be like one of the nicest dudes in real life yeah <laughs> same with oh, like, true. same with Jonathan man <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah Jonathan he he never you know you people fall into some of this and it's easy to where you're kind of you know you, you get you get you get once you arrive on set like whether if you had a driver or not like you're you know, you're taken into your trailer and then from your trailer, you're, I mean, I've, I've done like really hard, like manual labor work type work. And so I have a different perspective on it, you know? And so, and then you're like, you're walked over to wardrobe and makeup, you know, like they want to make sure that you're okay when you get there. And then like, you know, you get to hair and makeup and then you're escorted back to your trailer. And then, you know, you're escorted over like, Hey, it's time to, to have lunch and you're having a nice warm lunch. And then you go back to your trailer. And then, I mean, there's, there's just, I guess my point is, and then you're sheltered to set. And if it gets too cold, you're given a, a jacket. And if it gets too colder or colder than that, then you're taken to a heating tent. And then if, if there's more time that goes by, then you're taken back to your trailer. So we're kind of, my point is, is we're, we're kind of put in this bubble and it's easy to to make that bubble your identity um but i think my point is some of the best actors there they they have they have ways of keeping themselves still grounded and you know um i was working with an actor two years ago i think and and he insisted he was just like no i think i'm gonna walk like he wanted to walk back to back to base camp and um and they were just like are you sure? Like, do you want someone to walk with you? Or, you know, we'll have a car, we'll have a production vehicle, just follow you back. Like, uh, you know, follow right behind you in case you change your mind. So some of this sounds, sounds really weird. so ridiculous. You know, <laughs> but um, yeah, so, I mean, like for me, like I, like I said, I have, I have a, um, uh, I'm a contractor, I have a, a companies, I have companies outside of this. And Could you so, tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so I have a construction company, and we do work in New Mexico and Arizona. And that experience, it, it really, um, the, you know, the process of creating bids, the process of seeing your work that you've created on paper and bringing it to life and using armies of people. To, it's kind of a very similar thing, you know. And then um, when you're on location and you're working on, on a, pro or a project out of town, 
you know, it's that same camaraderie, you know, you, your whole crew, you have your whole crews and you go uh, back home at night and everybody, uh, you know, has a beer and has dinner maybe together. And that, I love that kind of, um, that type of, uh, uh, <clears throat> I guess like, um, uh, in a sense, it's, it's like you're, 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 you were almost like we're, I like that feeling like you're almost in a, a, a circus, you know, it's that, it's that type of feeling and uh, just the relationships you build and, and the fact that I could be on site and have my hard hat on and have my protection glasses on and I'm visiting site for a few days and everyone just treats me like I'm just like, I'm, I'm just the guy that does, you know, there to the general the, to do the work. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that's cool. And it helps me reset because then when I go back to film, it's like, I really take it like, wow, this is much more special, you know, and it, it would be hard if, you know, it's hard when you hit like, um, uh, like right now we've had like nine months and nothing, nothing's filming. Like for me, I haven't filmed until the, since the end of last year on a, um, a horror film. So, I mean, I think just those experiences um, really help in that way, you know, in terms of, of uh, being relatable to people and, and keeping it real, because that's, that's really what we're meant to do is give ac accurate and, and real portrayals and, and be able to live in these characters, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. That, I think that helps people me. tend to forget that celebrities are human. Do you know, they just see them as actors, but like, it's not like that. And yeah. It's good. It's good to remain grounded, like you said. Yeah, it's good to remember that you're human sometimes, and we're allowed to make mistakes, and you're allowed to, you know, go out in public without being asked for autographs and stuff like that every ten minutes. Do you get recognized a lot? Yeah. Do you think? Yeah, I mean, it it happens. It's weird, but um, you know, right now I'm living in. Since the show started, I moved uh, back to New Mexico, um, and. Uh, it, but oddly, it happens more like in New York and L.A. And um, there was one morning um, I was actually uh, I was running to a meeting in New York and a guy goes uh, like I was, I was sprinting like I was late. I forget why it was something something happened. Anyways, um, this guy yells out. He's like, run, Victor, run, <laughs> you know, and uh, and then sometimes, you know, you forget that that you're you know you, you just it, i don't know i think if it was more regular i probably maybe have more of a, a different opinion on it but um you know like i was uh at the the met museum and this couple actually italian couple came up to me and they were just like hey uh do you mind in like broken english do you mind taking a picture with um uh and i thought he said of my wife and i said yeah sure i'll take a picture of her and so i got his camera and he goes, no, 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 no. Do you mind um, taking a picture on, uh, he said, he said on his wife. And I was just like, um, I figured that was, he's like, he's like, with, oh. he's like, with, oh. with my wife. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I said, yeah. And so we, we, you know, took the picture and I was just, I thought naturally, like, I didn't think this was about me. I thought, you know, we're here in this, uh, uh, what is it? The Egyptian uh, exhibit. I did not think about it like it was about me at all. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of, that part's been surreal in a sense to, to over the last 10 years be getting recognized and like, hey, you know, hey, can you sign this? Can you kiss my baby? Uh, whatever the <laughs> request is. Uh, but it's, it's, you it's cool, I guess it comes before? with the territory, you know? <laughs> That's so okay. it's just scary oh, character man. the show. Why would anyone want you kissing their baby? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, like, you, you're you literally... Know, like, uh, <laughs> oh. politicians shaking hands, kissing babies. <laughs> they say that in, in Ireland. No, no, we don't, don't want our politicians here. kissing our baby. We fucking hate them. Yeah. It's also, they don't last very long. They don't, actually, no. There you go. They, they normally there you go. step down or they get caught in a scandal. Oh, yeah. That's a big thing. So what is, what is uh, like, I was curious, I've been wanting to ask, I'm a, I'm a huge UFC fan. Um, what does the, um, what do they think of, what do you guys think of Conor McGregor in Ireland? What's like the public, well, what's his public all, persona? We're huge UFC fans too. 
Ah, uh, okay. Uh, what are we talking about? Our, you know, our favorite fighter. We're wrong. It's actually the guy who beat the shit out of McGregor. Can be. Oh, can we? <laughs> oh, I love um, we like Connor. I yeah. mean, you like to see him I'm fight. I'm a huge Khabib fan too. My man. The thing about Connor yeah. is like you like to see him fight, and you're sad when he loses. But but then just outside Connor the is. octagon, it's just it's like he goes around beating up old people sometimes. I mean, he's uh, gotten better. He's, yeah. he's gotten better. I mean, in the last like <laughs> year and a bit now, he hasn't done anything too bad. But like, no, but uh, <laughs> It's kind of like a fall from grace, you know. He became this like amazing guy. Like all, Ireland was behind this man, and they wanted to see him take over. He kind of did it. But he did. Yeah. He won two divisions, but he got that, and he went. I want more. And it was yep. only when a Floyd Mayweather fight happened, we were all like, "Eh," because he just started going crazy. And it was yes. a downward, a downward spiral from there. Yeah. Like I yep. think with the Khabib fight. It what he wanted to do was be gone for a while and come back and beat the top guy. Yeah. But in the end, that didn't happen. And since, yeah. since then, he's kind of MIA. Um, I was actually, I was at the Mayweather uh, McGregor fight. And, was that um, like? it, you know, it wasn't as I thought it, there was all this hype around it. And um, we looked at the tickets a few weeks before and we we're just like, Oh, that's insane. It's crazy. You know? And then, um, and then, you know, uh, kind of knew we were going to be there anyways for, for work stuff. And then, um, ended up on the day, like scoring tickets for like, like eighth of what the price was. Uh -huh. And then when we got in there, we were kind of like in the mid, mid part of our section. And there were like tons of seats below us. We, we didn't sit there. At first. We decided not to go down at first. But then, sure enough, like once the main card started, people just started moving down. So we moved down to the bottom of our section, like better seats, which were probably double the price. So it was mm. good that we didn't, cool, you know, right? make that decision. But if you look at the footage and you look at photos, it, it was pretty, um, <clears throat> there, there weren't a lot of people there. Yeah, I think, not to say it was kind of like a mock, a mock fight kind of thing, but like I don't think people treated it the same way they would treat an actual championship fight. Because to yeah. be honest, I don't think I'd ever go to it to watch UFC. Yeah. Or, or or even boxing, because what you get on TV looks so much better. Like yeah. What, like no, you're hundred percent right. You, you're miles up. There's someone, some lads head, head in front of you. <laughs> uh, there's people throwing their arms up in the air like way. And you, you can barely see the fight versus just the commentary and up close with the fight. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll pick the TV one every time. Oh, and you end up, if you don't have great seats, you end up, you know, watching the monitor anyway. Oh, yeah. The, the yeah. yeah. Front, which is like, you know, I, I could be doing this at home. So you're 100% right. Like, why would you pay $120 yeah, I, I, to watch TV there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do you guys think before we, we get off here? What, what do you guys think of um, um, Khabib's next fight? And what I are your Khabib. predictions? We want to hear yours first. We, and... we want to hear yours first. <laughs> oh, man. Everyone I knows think... our idea about it. Yeah. I think, honestly, I think, I think, I don't know. I just, I don't see him. Um, I don't see him getting beat. But I also, the other thing is, in people's lives out you have to be pretty special to not have your life outside of you know everything affect your performance you know and it kind of translates into film and television as well mm -hmm. and um and i just i mean he lost his dad yeah. and i just i don't know i mean in the back of my head i'm that that's such a big deal for him you mm -hmm. know and to be walking into I mean, he's only putting pressure on himself because he said his, these are going to be his two last fights, you know, yeah. he's going to retire. So to want to hang it up on a, with a legacy and after just losing his dad and making that promise, like, hey, this is, you know, it's going to be, I have two more fights left. You couldn't, that, that's a ton of pressure. And um, of course he's a machine, but all of us are human and, and it's, that's a tough uh that it's a tough place. Yeah. No, I get that. Yeah. Yours uh, is a lot more complex than my answer. I know. 
Um, oh, I can't think of his name. Anderson Silva is coming out for his last fight ever. Yep. Like, he's coming out yeah. of retirement for one more versus, uh, is it Kamara? No, oh, who is it? Oh, I don't know. Who Actually, I didn't, I didn't hear the last one announced. I don't, did they make the official, did they make the official announcement? I saw a video of him signing a contract. So. Oh, wow. So, okay. I got to get uh, in the UFC <laughs> game. And since yeah. Silva, I don't, nothing's coming up here now, but I definitely have heard something about him coming out of retirement for like one last cool. fight. Um, uh, what's your prediction for the Khabib fight, Thomas? Oh, I like Gaetje. And I think we've said this lots of times that I do like Gaetje. I think he's a good fighter. Have you seen? There's like a video of him doing leg kicks. Where he just oh. loves breaking people's legs, like he absolutely yeah. loves it, uh, and he's supposed to be he's a very good wrestler as well. Now, oh yeah, I, I don't know if he's better than Khabib, but you never know. Um, I think it's going to be a challenging fight for Khabib. Wherever Khabib goes, carnage follows. Like yeah. it's, just, it's just like a pile of bodies behind this man. You know, he's not—he hasn't been beaten. Like <laughs> no. I don't care. You can be great at wrestling, but like I've seen people try and knock this guy out. And nothing happens. Yeah. I mean, he took two solid shots, maybe even three solid shots from Connor, mm. um, you know, with the snap in his left hand and everything. And he just kept, he keeps and going. And like, other yeah. fighters. Yeah. And other fighters as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. It's going to be a great fight. And Gaethje, I think he's, um, he, he's also, he's an amazing fighter. And to see what he did to Ferguson was, was crazy. Oh, it was, but, it was heartbreaking. If man. he beats Khabib, he becomes one of the best fighters. Oh, he does. He beats Ferguson is. and Khabib. If he loses, like, he's just like the rest. If Khabib finishes his fight with uh, St. Pierre, yeah. and if he wins that, he's the best fighter ever. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to make you guys a deal, okay? So yeah. um, Go I got to get going. But yeah, good. the next time, let's do this again, and let's let's just talk UFC. Oh, no and way. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring uh, a special um, UFC guest, and we'll we'll get his opinion and on this on everything and what he thinks <laughs> as well. You're my, okay. Yes. Ned. Yes. <laughs> <Does that sound laughs> I mean, uh, you, we're gonna go there. So. Do you want to do this before or after the beef fight? We we'll do it after. So we let's can do have it a after. chat. Yeah. Let's, let's do it after. Because I can't tell you who this fighter is, but he actually has a fight coming up as well. So let's just uh, let's Ooh. leave it there. And <laughs> um, and I thank you guys. I thank you for the interview. And I, I'm giving you my word. You know, I'm not a Hollywood type. I'm not gonna. We will not gonna turn from We will that. text you. So let, let's look actually. at like <laughs> if if the world is still spinning here in the U.S. in <laughs> November and December, we'll um we'll plan it then. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, okay. All right, guys. You've okay. been great. You've well, been thank you for getting on. I even gave us a gift at the end. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. You've been great. Thanks for getting on. Uh, Thanks so we're much. looking forward to Better Call Saul whenever it may come out in the near future. Uh, so, you know, take your handy and good Wait, luck. Before, 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 hold on, hold on. Right. If people want to check you out and they want to keep up with what you're at, where can they find you? Oh, yeah. Um, so my uh, Instagram, that's what I'm more i haven't been as active um just because you know not a lot's been going on but um yeah. it the uh, at jeremiah bitsui so at j-e-r-e-m-i-a-h b-i-t-s-u-i that's my um my instagram so follow me there awesome. and then oh i started a new channel i should be plugging my stuff what am i doing <laughs> um breaking breaking dad tv so breaking dad um, either you can go to breakingdad.tv or you can go to Breaking Dad uh, at Breaking Dad TV. And, uh, you know, we try to do some, I've been trying to get this vlog going and we're going to start it up again and start doing some more uh, vlogging. So check it awesome. out. And next time we get on, we'll talk about that as well. Awesome. Okay. Well, cool. thanks so much for getting on. Have a great day. And uh, everyone watching, uh, take it Good luck. Yeah.